Welcome back to Coding Game. Summer Challenge 2024. And there's only, what, two days left to go? Hello, Amaro. How is it going? It's actually... My rank is actually much higher than I was expecting it to be. Um, and the last time I submitted was um, the last stream I did, which was several days ago. Uh, and I still haven't done the racing game. So that's actually surprising. Maybe a lot of people are just not doing all four games. I don't know. <coughs> so this is, I think this will probably be the last stream because I don't want to do another stream, you know, while there's only a few hours left. That always feels uncomfortable. It's a bit stressful. So yeah, this will probably be the last one. So let's just make some finishing touches. We'll see what happens. So um, first things first. I need to fix something. Here we go. Yes, yeah, so I put this in just the other day. 30... Okay, so this is expected length of a game. That's wrong. It shouldn't be 30, should it? It's 30 spaces long. But you're moving roughly two spaces every turn, so it should really be 15. And in fact, it should even be more than that, actually, because you stumble sometimes. We'll go with 15. How's the Godot thing going? It's going all right. I have a... Um... um <clears throat> Let's see, I have a guy, I can make him walk around on the screen with the keyboard controls and I can pick up an item, but right now the definition of pick up an item means if I walk over the item, then the sprite of that item gets copied into my inventory slot and then the item gets deleted. So I need to do more with that, like the properties of the item and stuff like that. I have, have some sort of data structure for the item, but um, yeah. I still don't know whether I want to go for a, like a tactics game or... I'm actually thinking I might try to make it into some sort of... use where you play cards to do your movement and actions. Like a deck builder. I don't know. So we change that to 15. Um, I'll right, we'll take the bosses out, just put, put some players in. I don't know, just these two. All right, so we just got to plug in the um, I've got a lot, lot of logging statements I don't really want either. Okay. All right, so the racing game, we're going to need all this stuff that we need. See, now I regret <laughs> this, all this copy and pasting. This this could have been done with a, like some sort of interface for games. And that's the correct way to do it. Whatever. Uh, skating. Skating. 
defeating. So we're gonna need a skating state that comes after archery. Oh, make this bigger. There we go. So this is gonna be skating. So for skating, what do we have? Um, skating, it's... Oh, this is total spaces traveled. Okay. So we've got, let's say, dist. Risk. Oh, yeah, we've got the risk factor. God, why am I changing the archery state? Just copy that. This is what happens. Oh, what? I didn't copy it. Okay, whatever. Dist int. Risk int. Turns left, int. Try and get next states. So let's read how this works. Risk order. So risk order has got to be defined as well. For direction in direction. Sorry, so for each direction, index equals it's going to be risk order dot index. So we want to find the first letter of the direction in that order, and that tells us what index we've got. If index is zero,
Wait, okay, so if the risk is negative... If... Risk less than zero, then we want to stun, stun them for a turn. So... Salt... Equals... Same dist add one to the risk Okay. Alright, so that's what we do if we've got risk, if we're stunned. Alright, so otherwise, um, we have to check the index. So here, new dist equals self dot dist plus one. New risk equals self dot risk minus one. So we just have to do this for each elif index is one. You add two. It's two. You add two, but you increase your risk by one. And if it's three, risk equals self dot risk plus two. All right, so after that, for the next two turns and their risk is reset to zero. Okay, so if risk is greater if new risk is greater or equal to five, then we will actually want to replace it with minus two. Then they'll be stunned for two turns next turn, but they'll still do this movement. All right, so then we want this. So we got new dist, new risk. Left minus one. Okay. Result. So that return that in the same format. Index risk order. It's a string. A uh, risk order will be a string. I think you can do string dot index. Otherwise, we can change it to a list. I think it's fine as a string.
can do that, right? Yeah. So that's the state. So we've got the, these. We should actually put them in the correct order. This comes after archery. And then we've got this for for um, skating. Given, so we want the probability that a player at distance one beats a player at distance two, given that there are n turns left. Or we've got risk one. Am I even... I think my formula is not even using risk because it's just too confusing. Yeah. My formula is literally x1 minus x2 over root n. It's not factoring in the risk. And it should, but... Man. But we should factor in the stun, and that's easy to factor in. So it's D1, D2, let's say weight 1, weight 2. Oh man, I've been so inconsistent with these labeling. X1, Y1, X1, Y1 D1, D2, W1, okay, whatever. Um, beats player at D2. N turns to go. Alright, so this is a similar format. So it's going to be like the first formula, but it's just different. Get rid of all this. So it's going to be D1 minus D2. So if you have a if you're at D if you're at a further distance, you're gonna have a higher probability. But we also want to add in um this difference double twice. Okay, what's the average distance you go? So you go either one two, two, or three. It's, it's the same as the hurdles. So two is the average. So... So we can say plus two times W1 I don't remember how this first formula works for the hard hurdles now. 
This was X turns from the finish. I see. So here we want. Sorry, this one. W one plus two. Wait, so it's a having weight is a bad thing. So you want to get negative from this. You want to say W or just do minus two times W one minus W two. So you minus the amount of stun we have, which is more than the opponent. And then this whole thing we want to divide by math to square root of n. Okay. It's a very basic formula and it's not even using the risk factor other than the weight because it's difficult to deal with the risk factor. I need to run trials and see what the actual averages and stuff are. All right, well, anyway. Um, so for how long is a skating game? They don't say, do they? I'll check the code. Fifteen, it's always fifteen. So, alright, we'll go with that. Sounds about right. But, length length of the game is going to be half of that, so 7.5, so it's actually shorter. That means there's less emphasis on winning the skating game, because you get more points anyway, just by virtue of there being so many games. Yeah, expected hurdle game points. All right, so we're doing. So it's. Let's copy the hurdle. Why is this to do still here? I did that ages ago. All right. Actually, I didn't, but I'm not going to bother doing it. Um, it's too complicated. Yeah, expect a skating points. It's D one. Equals skating state dot <laughs> 
um, this. And then D2 equals enemy hurdles state zero dot dist skating states All right and then we got w1 it's that dot stun oh, it's not stun so it's oh for goodness sake alright just get the risk factors risk 1 equals gate so it's this And then W1 is just going to be minus R1 if R1 is negative, else zero. So that's how long we wait. And then we have to do R2 is To check all these indices are correct. Okay, so that's the D's and the W's. So the probability of gold is so this is going to be skating. So it'd be it's going to be D one, D two. W1, W2. And this will be D1, D3, W1, W3. This one will be D2, D1, W2, W1. This is just one minus this, isn't it? But, okay, whatever. Um, this one is D3, D1, W3, W1. Close. Okay, so not that. It will be N. We know it's N. We have to um, do n equals
ones left. And let's just do this little thing where we add little delta just to, so that we can still just use this formula. I didn't put n in there. So the average length of a game is 7.5. Okay, so that's, I think, the skating formula. We've got diving to side. So we've got, oh God, so much repetition in this. I hate my program now. <laughs> if, so if risk order is none, expected final Okay, so we can replace those with skating, nice. That is seven. See, I shouldn't be typing these in manually. It's so bad. I should have a lookup table that gives seven for this, but come this far. Um, I think that's all right. So it's going to be expected hurdle times archery times Skating times diving. So this should all be the same. And then down here, uh, my skating score. So it's going to be seven and eight. And down here, so we've got to do if i equals two, GPU equals game over, then we've got risk order equals none. My All right, my skating state, enemy skating state is none, else enemy skating state is that. Okay, this one needs to be fetched from the... So it's going to need to be distance. So it's zero and three, one and four, two and five. No one else uses reg six. Really? Okay. Just this one. So, state will be the first position, followed by the risk, followed by what is it? What's the zero there for? Index. Oh yeah, because it's a, it's a, it trims the uh, string. Okay. 
All right, so not zero. That is going to be the reg six. Never before being used. Okay. So then we want this. Change that to skating. Oh man. Uh hope that's everything. So how many points did we get for this? Two thousand. Does that improve? Probably not. I mean we're doing something for skating now. Cannot access local variable new risk where it is not associated with a value. It should index should always be one of these. What's the index? Like, how could it be anything else? One. Oh, you still need to define new risk. <laughs> that was the problem. It was undefined there. Alright, it's good. I, I wanted it to fail here if there was something wrong with this, so it's good that I didn't define new risk beforehand. Goodness sake. It's mistakes like this. That's why it's good to name these differently from the previous classes. More points. Slightly did slightly better in that game. This new change. So our rank is five fourteen. Done. I don't know. It, it, like I can't think of anything new to add that wouldn't require completely overhauling everything. So there's only so far I could go with this strategy. And I think I've probably gone as far as I can, because at the end of the day, this just boils everything down to a simple expectation and a variance for each of the th four games. And surprisingly, that did actually quite well, which just goes to show that these, over the course of many turns, the central limit theorem applies, and it just kind of averages out to be just, just a, 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 a mean and a variance. But to do slightly better, like, I would need to do some sort of simulation or something. 
looking at exactly what like the next five turns could be some sort of branching and that makes all this useless so yeah uh i don't know let's try submitting it at least you know let me look at these numbers Try submitting it then. Wait, I want to get rid of this logging. What, who's doing that? You stop it. these radical differences towards the end like here we think if we go up we're gonna get 1824 and if we go left you get 1128 that's crazy difference why is that is it because we're close to finishing one of the games and it's just like neck and neck we are neck and neck here are we you can't tell from the racing game because they've gone round the circle so So we're saying up. Up would be good for the combo game. All right. Well, let's submit it. So 514. If this does better than 514, that's it. I'm done. Like, I don't see anything else I can do. If this does worse, either we go back to submitting the old code because it, it stores all your previous submissions, so... Or... Try to fix something, or just be arrogant and submit the newer one because it's more in line with what I want it to be. I don't know. Probably just submit the old code. <laughs> Four two, not not great, but it's the beginnings. Just climbing the ladder, quite a few losses. Like it could just be just not trying to do anything with the racing game was optimal after all. <laughs> I don't know, racing game is a tricky one. The diving was the surprising one. Like, adding in the diving code, that's what shot me up the board. What's with all these losses here? This is not looking good. Oh, these, are, these guys are at the top of the ladder, so...
Come on, just push past 518 and we're done. Let's see where everyone else is. Losing ranks. Well, it starts from the bottom and, it, and it, you climb. Well, when it reruns the algorithm, you start from the bottom and you basically keep climbing until you stabilize. So we're only like 20% of the way through the climb. So no, I, no idea where it's going to end up. We have to wait for a hundred percent really like you could even end up at top spot even if you're this low rank in the first 20 percent um all right so where's everyone else who was basically neck and neck with me Where's oh of course. There's the new the new Legend League is being released. So like the top one hundred people or so probably promoted. DBDR is always good at these. He's always um how do we see the Legend. There's only forty three people in the Legend League. Royal, Nanaida, DVDR. Pony, Pony, Code, Code. What, what universities are these guys at? Well, oh, these are probably the alma maters. Wrocław, that is like, I think that's like the best performing university on this entire site. Um, I've been to the University of WhatsApp to present a conference before. They are a really good university for computer science, like really solid computer science department. They publish a lot of papers, so that's not surprising actually in uh, Poland. Poland is known for having a lot of good coders. See another WhatsApp. Kyoto? Wrocław. They must have a whole coding game club in the University of Wrocław. When I... Man, when I tried to, like, register for the conference in Wrocław, I couldn't even pay because my the bank that I was using they couldn't even un understand the the L with the line through it, which is like the the w the w sound in Polish. Um, but they wouldn't let me put it, and I'm like, okay, but that's the name of it. It has to be there, otherwise it's not the name of the university. I think in the end I had to actually I had to get my professor to pay with his credit card or something because the bank was just like refusing to put the L like that, but then when they replaced it with the actual, like, the English L, it wouldn't count. You pronounce it really good? I studied Polish, or GCSE in the UK. Polish is really common in the UK because we have just so many Polish people, it's actually really useful to, to, um, know Polish. <laughs> um, oh man, it was a tough language, though. I got a D, the GCSE. Um, but I didn't really, I didn't really have, have enough lessons to really make, to, to really bring it to the same level as my Spanish or my French. But yeah, I did study a bit of Polish. Um, yeah, I mean, I like the sound of Polish, but the grammar, oh my God, <laughs> it's, it's tough. I guess it's similar to. I guess, well, English, gra English grammar is pretty tough as well, so... Probably similar to Polish people trying to learn English. Recurse. English grammar is tough. I've heard, but it's hard for me to evaluate that, but from... If I've learned it natively, but, um, I don't know.
But I mean, it also like English, French, Spanish, German, those languages, it's, if you know one of those, it's easy to learn the other. And that's what I found when I was in school because I studied both Sp Spanish and French. But then Polish is like the Slavonic languages, so it's a little bit different. But if you're Russian, then you probably have a much easier time learning Polish. Um, 665. All right, 50%. All right, I think there's a chance we'll do better this with this submission. And when I was a kid going to school, like all the bus drivers were Polish. So it's like, you know, like you're better off just saying like, um, Dziękuję to them instead of thanks. <laughs> all right. But this, this probably will be the last stream I do of this. Uh, well, this certainly will be the last stream. I'm not going to do a stream. When there's like like less than 24 hours left i never do that i never touch this in the final 24 hours it's just too stressful it's like you, you might mess something up or i know you got your your past submissions but still it's just too stressful to touch this in the final hours <laughs> come on five nine nine I mean, this is just an indication. So once the deadline is over and everything's closed, they'll do a full rerun of all the leagues separately. So you can't drop a league or go up a league while you're within a league. So like if you're in gold and then they rerun everything, it's not going to take you to, to silver or legend. So um, that's fixed. But within the league, you'll be re-ranked. So everything will be recalculated and then you'll get a final rank. Usually, it's roughly what you're seeing here. I mean, with the exception of the, like people are changing their code, but usually it's it's roughly what what the rank looked like in the final hours. So, like, if you if you screw up and submit something with an error error in the final hours, and people have done that before then the worst that could happen is you end up with rank 861, for example, which is, you know, not terrible. Um, you're not going to go back to Wood League. <laughs> Music stopping again. Yeah, I was surprised this actually worked because I never really do this type of approach, like a really, just like a probabilistic heuristic. Like I do use heuristics extensively, but they're always kind of mixed in with some sort of branching, some sort of uh, try try end steps or, or do some sort of bread first search along a path and like prune trees and stuff. But this was just straight up, just, just, um, Treating it as like a like an infinite sequence of um, random walks, and taking the averages. Five eight eight, come on, you can do better. I don't want to have to submit the older code because it's sort of. Because it's not right. It's sort of not right. It's but then it does better. Because it's not right to say my predicted number of points is so and so when I'm completely ignoring the uh, skating altogether. That's I 
Still getting some wins. If I'm really close, like if, if I just get to like 540 or something, which is technically worse. See, look, at that point, I'm just happy to submit the new code, even though it's not. Because you can't easily compare it to the old code. Because if I rerun it, I might end up slightly, somewhere slightly different. So I think if I, if I stay here or better, then I'm definitely just sticking with that. So let's just wait for this to finish. Still got a bit to go, so there's hope. And then I can put this to rest and focus only on one programming thing, which is the, uh, the code jam. Which I won't do today, but I'll probably do the next session tomorrow. Today, I don't know, just play something less taxing, some shooting games or something. I think you got a great idea. I even considered trying to do the same, but I could not understand what are the meaning of the equations inside the CDF, so I just stuck to my strategy. I barely understood them as well. It's, um... Um, stuff I don't remember so well. <laughs> you can find lots of like CDFs for common things, but I sort of had to mix that in with, with, like having to alter it for making adjustments. Like this adjustment that I did today. So for skating, like the prediction was, and this is such a basic formula because it's not even factoring the risk in, which I couldn't really, I couldn't think of a way to do to handle risk. So I ignored risk altogether, but it comes down mostly to D1 minus two, D2, which is saying if, if, if your distance is greater than D2, then your have a higher chance of winning. But then my formula on paper was missing the stun bit, so I had to like add that in like on the fly while I was coding. So I figured, okay, we have to factor, factor this in, but because hang on. I don't think this is even the right way around. No, it's it's okay. Yeah, 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 this is right. So if player two has more stun than player one, you would expect player 1 has a higher chance of winning. And if player 2 has more stun, then W1 minus W2 will be negative. Negative, that will be positive. So we're adding in a positive amount if W2 has more stun. And we're multiplying by 2 because we're saying being stunned for one turn is basically costing you two turns of progress because on average you move two spaces per turn. Sorry, yeah, it's, it's it's costing you two spaces. Um, yeah, and then the root n doesn't matter so much. It, what all that matters really is the order of magnitude. So it's supposed to be root root the number of turns because in a one-dimensional random walk the variance is root n or something like that and if you go up to two-dimensional then it becomes three like n to the power of three over two or something and then when you go into three dimensions it becomes like n to the five over two I can't remember this. It's like if you study Markov chains, there's some patterns for different dimensions. But in the one-dimensional number line, you get some interesting results from that. Like,
if you walk randomly on the number line, you'll always eventually re reach um, your starting point at some point. Even if you just go off in some random direction, um, you can go really far. Eventually, there is a probability of one that you will return to your starting point. An infinite number of times, even. In two dimensions, that's still true. So if you start somewhere in the grid and you take random steps up, down, left or right, uh, no matter where you end up, there is a, 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 a positive a, a probability one that you will actually return back to the start. And that's not that intuitive because it's like eventually things spread out and it doesn't seem likely, but it is. Uh, now, when you go to 3D, though, that's no longer true. You actually get lost. Um, there was a um, a non-zero prob probability of getting lost permanently and never ever returning to your starting point. What was that? What's that even called? It's called like the the hitting probability or something. Yeah, it's all stuff that comes about when you study Markov chains. Okay, 486, is that it? Still going, just a little bit more. No, I think it is actually finished. I'm just trying to think if there's any, any little slip up I've made that could be fixed. Like I thought I just saw one there, but no, that's the correct, that's the correct way around. Um, Chains of Markov. <laughs> Call your game that. <laughs> My game has nothing to do with Markov chains. <laughs> Well, I haven't even decided what my game's about, so it could be. Um, oh my god, this, the amount of repetition I did in this, it... Oh really? It's only 359 lines? It just felt like way more than that, but... Okay. Oh, one thing I should check if there's any errors. Um, unfortunately, they don't have like it'd be really nice if they had sort of like a like an exclamation mark or something that told you you actually got an error in that game. Um, but I guess I don't know. They don't. So the only way you can know. Oh, I dropped down to five hundred. <laughs> Whatever. Um, the only way you can know really is just looking at each individual game. And if you look at this, if there's any colored bars, that means that guy got an error. And there's no bars, so nobody got an error. So if you look at the ones you lose, because if you get an error, even if you have more points than your opponent, if you get an error, even if it was like towards the end of the game, you just instantly lose and they, they win, I believe, or at least that's usually the case. So errors are, you know, will absolutely destroy you. So like sometimes you just got to have a look through your losing games and check if there are any errors that caused that. And if it's not happening, if you don't see it happening, then you know it's probably, if it's happening at all, it's probably happening with such a low probability that it doesn't matter. But yeah, it's still good to check. From the conversations on the Discord, it looks like that many people doing Monte Carlo tree search simulation. Right. Yeah. It would have been an interesting thing to uh, to do. Like this, 
my intention with this was literally it would just be a fallback. Like, use the base probability to work out how good a state is, but then, but, and then I would actually do some sort of Monte Carlo search or something and fall back to this estimation as like, like the base estimation. But, um, I reckon in the final turns, it's just much worse. Because the whole point of this is that it's more accurate for longer sequences. But then when you get into the final turns, it's, it's there's only five turns to go or something. Like, then, and, and some moves could be critical. Uh, then, you know, assuming you have an infinite sequence is a, is a bad assumption. And this is probably giving me bad moves towards the end. So like you could do a Monte Carlo search and you could you could say as time goes on you you weight the um probabilistic thing less and you weight the Monte Carlo search more. I don't know. So it could, it could just be like a linear sum of the two where the the quantity shifts. <laughs> Something like that. I actually always fail on really deep simulations. I can simulate a little bit, little using DFS, DFS and stuff like that, but doing full search with heuristic function is out of my reach. Well, no one really does full search. If by full search, you mean like, like checking every possible branch, because they're just, um, you can do full search within one game though. I mean, if there's only 10 turns to go, then, then yeah. Then, then you can actually full search that one game. Yeah. Um, so it's not like anyone else is managing to do full search. They're always pruning. No, I mean, good scoring function is tough for me. Yeah, that's... That's a tricky one, and usually the, the crux of an A-star search, uh, uh, the difference between A-star search and um, Dijkstra, isn't it? Having a good heuristic. Alright. Looks like 500 is roughly where I end up then. I'm still ahead of Koo, but I think I think I think Koo is doing some changes, so um, he'll probably jump ahead again. Okay then, guess. I will go, um, finish the stream and I'll probably come back in like 5-10 minutes. I'll just play some shooting games or something because I need my brain needs a rest. I wanted to play that puzzle game, Isles of Sea and Sky, but my brain um, is not ready for that. So, thanks for watching and um, I'll have to upload the footage to YouTube as well because... Uh, Apparently these streams get a lot of views. <laughs> um, particularly the advent of code ones. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you in 
the next major competition I'll be doing will be either the Coding Fall Winter or Advent of Code. Both usually happen in December. It's just a question of which comes first. Last year, they were basically in the same weeks. <laughs> um, so yeah, probably see you in the winter, unless some other competition takes my fancy before then, but none that I can think of. It's Coding Game and Advent Dakota, really, the two that I, I would actually bother streaming. So, see you in the winter. Bye-bye.